Hi everyone, this is Yon, and in this episode, we're gonna make this simple kids wallet. These are basic by fold wallet, perfect for children in elementary grade. I made one with button snap closure and one without. The finished measurements are about four inch by three and three quarter inch when it's folded like this. There are four card slots, perfect to carry their student ID, library card, etc. Also two compartments. This can be used to store folded notes in case they need to bring some cash every now and then. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and without further ado, let's get started. First, we're going to work on the pocket panel, so prepare panel 1. Apply some lightweight interfacing on the wrong side just to stabilize the fabric a little bit without adding too much bulk. And of course, you want to center the position since the pattern called for smaller size for the interfacing. On the wrong side of panel 1, you want to draw the fold lines just like shown on the screen right now. Start measuring and drawing the line from the top. Now let's head over to the ironing board and we're going to start folding and pressing from the bottom or the last line. So you want to fold this towards the top and then press. Now open the fold and then fold the following line towards the bottom. Meanwhile, on the right side, you should have the first pleat. Now let's go ahead and press. Fold the next line towards the top and press. Now let's open the fold again and then fold the last line towards the bottom. On the right side here, you should have your second pleat and then press. Now let's turn this to the right side and then give this another good pressing so that everything will look nice and crisp. Now let's go to the sewing machine and then top stitch the pleat lines. Once you've done that, stitch the side edges with an eighth of an inch seam allowance to hold the pleats in place. Now we want this pocket panel to measure four and a half inch tall. So grab your ruler and measure four and a half inch from the top edges and then trim off any excess fabric at the bottom. So your card pocket panel should end up measuring four and a half inch by four and a half inch. And you wanna repeat the same to the second panel. Next, we're gonna sew the lining of the pocket. So grab panel two and lay that right side down. Align all the edges and then stitch the right hand side with quarter of an inch seam allowance. Once you've done that, press the seams open and then fold wrong sides together just like so and then press this again and then top stitch top stitch as close as you can to the edges about two millimeters or a little less than an eighth of an inch seam allowance once you've done top stitching you want to stitch all around the other side edges use about an eighth of an inch seam allowance all right guys now let's take the second pocket panel and then take panel two and lay that right side down and then we're going to stitch the side, this time the opposite side from the first pocket panel. So remember we sew the first pocket panel on the right hand side. Now this time we're going to sew the second pocket panel on the left hand side. So that when you lay the pocket side by side, the top stitch edges should be facing each other. Next, we're going to prepare panel 3 or the wallet interior. On the wrong side, you want to apply some midweight stabilizer. This is essential to add structure to the wallet. I use Decorbone here. Decoville Light and Craft Use will work great as well. So let's lay the glue side down and you want to center the position, of course. And then fuse this with an iron according to the manufacturer's instructions. Once you've done that, you want to lay panel 3 with the right side facing up. Lay the pocket panels right side up just like shown here. So the top stitch edges should be facing in towards the center of the wallet. And of course you want to align all the row edges. Now let's clip to hold everything in place and then stitch with quarter of an inch seam allowance to hold the pockets in place. And that's it guys, the wallet interior is done. For the wallet exterior or panel 4, you want to apply some feasible woven interfacing on the wrong side of the fabric to stabilize the fabric a little bit. However, if you use heavier fabric for your exterior, such as canvas or denim, you may leave out the interfacing. If you opt for the button snap closure, this is the time to do that. If you don't, you may skip this step and go straight to the assembling part. To make the button panel, you want to cut a little rectangle and stabilize the wrong side with the same stabilizer you use for panel 3. Fold the long sides in half, right sides together, and then stitch along the long sides with quarter of an inch seam allowance. Once you've done that, you want to turn this inside out, poke the corners to make them nice and neat, and then press and top stitch. Mark 3 quarter of an inch from the outer edge of the button flap, center the position of course, 
and then install the female button according to the manufacturer's instructions. Lay your wallet exterior panel with the right side facing up and if your fabric has directional prints like mine here, make sure that it's on proper direction. Position the button flap on the left hand side of the wallet exterior. Center the position with the right side facing down, just like shown here. Clip or pin to secure this in place and then stitch with quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now from the opposite side, you want to measure one and a quarter inch and then put a mark right on the center. On the wrong side, you want to add an extra layer of interfacing. I'm using the decor bone here to stabilize the button area. And then install the male button on that one and a quarter inch mark. Now it's time to assemble the wallet. So you want to lay the wallet exterior right side up. If you opt for the button snap, make sure that the button flap is at your left hand side and the male button is at your right hand side. Now take the wallet interior and of course you want to make sure that the pockets are facing the right direction. And then you want to lay this right side down. Just like that. If you didn't opt for button snap closure, you simply want to lay the wallet exterior and the wallet interior right sides together. But please pay attention if your fabric has directional print. Make sure that the wallet exterior and the wallet interior are facing each other at the correct direction. Now let's clip to secure everything and then sew all around with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, leaving about 3 to 4 inches of opening at the bottom of the wallet to turn this inside out later. As usual, I use my walking foot and since this wallet isn't too bulky for my machine, I use my universal needle size 9014. But if your machine is having a hard time with the bulk, try to use larger needles such as jeans needle. Once you're done sewing, you want to cut all the corners. Carefully though, do not cut through the stitches. And then you want to trim off the seam allowances of the sides and the top edges. Do not trim off the seam allowances of the bottom edges where the opening hole is because we need that extra fabric from the seam allowances to close the opening hole later. Now let's turn the fabric inside out through the opening hole. Poke the corners, make them nice and flat. Use point turner, knitting needle or chopstick. Fold the raw edges of the opening hole towards the wrong side about 3 8 of an inch and then secure with some clips. Once you've done that, you want to go and top stitch this all around. Start top stitching from the bottom where the opening hole is, so you can simultaneously close the opening hole. You want to top stitch as close as you can to the edges, especially when you get to the side edges where the credit card slots are sitting. Don't go beyond an eighth of an inch seam allowance because you may take away too much from the space for the card and may not be able to insert any card in the card slots later. Once you've done top stitching, you want to give your wallet a good pressing, both the exterior and the interior. Use pressing cloth over it, and then you want to fold it in half and press to train the wallet to have that bifold shape. And that's pretty much it, guys. The wallet is done. So thank you so much for watching, and I shall see you next time with another fun tutorial. Goodbye!